Amy and I decided to do was to say, could we go out and create a fake organization and then put an ad out that would get this ad to keep people in Washington? So Amy spent $20 putting an ad to spend it to try to get to Key Hill staffers. I spent $20 trying to get to key media mm -hmm. individuals. So you're creating your own phony political group and then targeting it to very specific individuals. Which is exactly what a lot of these groups were doing. And we are showing that despite all of these upgrades, it's still going on. So for $20, I was able to reach over 1,400 journalists right here in Washington, D.C. with this ad that talks about a group that's supposedly in favor of disclosure. $20, mm -hmm. yet we had over 1,400 impressions. And we're able to uh, reach hundreds of Senate staffers, too. The key people that are working on uh, this issue, and that is exactly the kind of thing that goes on. And by the way, if political groups want to do this kind of thing, then they should have, we did put a disclaimer on ours, but as you know, they don't have mm -hmm. to, and they also don't have to disclose the ads. Imagine if ads like these were kept on a file, public file on the Internet, so journalists could then check them out to make sure they're real and who's paying for them. Even though companies have said they're going to put in place new practices, you're saying even if that's enough, the playing field needs to be level. Well, it's, you might have occasional companies doing it, but what would say those companies couldn't reverse course if they changed management? Mm -hmm. What would happen if certain companies, if a Facebook or a Twitter, moved to better practices, but then the foreign actors decide to use other platforms? You know, Americans need to know the source of the political ads, whether it's American or foreign, we ought to be able to go look at the content that's being used for and against candidates. And this really goes to the heart of protecting our democracy. What we've seen so far is that for a little bit of money, then with some paid hackers mm -hmm. and some organized bots, you can drive a story into almost any mainstream media in a way that as we've seen, for example, with Facebook, touched 127 million Americans. Uh, that was just individual Americans touched by these Russian propaganda and misinformation efforts. We all, regardless of what party we belong to, ought to be concerned about that on a going forward basis because none of this ended on election day. And you've seen some of these ads. There's been a lot of conversation about micro-targeting. What kinds of divisions did they seek to exploit? How did these troll farms, these nefarious actors, try to really target these to different audiences? Well, in some ways, these companies, which are brilliant companies in America that we're proud of, but what they did was they gave them the tools to do this. And we know they went after certain people in certain states, in certain districts, uh, certain demographics, but we don't know a lot because some of these ads have just vanished. And that is why if you just put the same rules in place, then we would be able to see and campaigns would be able to see what these ads are. You know, in every ad, I have to say, I'm Amy Klobuchar, I approve this yeah. message, and mm -hmm. so does Mark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we just want to have that information out there um, because the last time I checked, our whole country was set up so it would be self-governing. We didn't want to have other countries influencing our democracy. We wanted to have the freedom to make our own decisions about who we voted for. And once you have actual evidence that ads are being bought in rubles and other countries are trying to intervene, you got to do something about it. And these companies are going to have to step forward and take responsibility. And what we've seen, for example, in Texas, there was a group that was a very kind of pro-nationalistic, mm -hmm. pro-Texas group. There was a similar group that was focused on Muslims who lived in Texas. And they ads tried to get both groups to show up at the same place with counter demonstrations. I mean, we saw what kind of activity, the horrific mm -hmm. actions that took place in Charlottesville earlier this year. I'm not saying that was spurred by Russian activity, but the notion that these companies are using Russian-generated content that's spewing hatred and trying to exacerbate mm -hmm. divisions where we've already got too many divisions in our country, I really hope that they will step up these companies and say, hey, they want to work with Senator Klobuchar and I and Senator McCain and others. This is broadly bipartisan. And say, how do we make sure we just get a little more disclosure? We just do this in the interest of our national security. My hope is that they will work with us. One, ex one more example yeah. of that um, ad you'll see at the hearing uh, is an ad of an African-American woman 
and the ad said, stay home. Uh, you don't have to go vote. You can vote from home and text these five numbers. And clearly, that was a lie. You couldn't vote that way. And we have no idea how many people took that as real because it actually had a disclaimer from the Clinton campaign, which, of course, was false. And uh, some of them had pictures of the candidate. And not, they're, they're fake. Yeah. And not to give you, you don't need more examples, but just no. <laughs> there was one Twitter account mm -hmm. that was called 10 GOP Party, representing itself to be the Tennessee Republican Party. It had 154,000 followers. The real Tennessee Republican Party has got about 13,000 followers. And people will say, well, people will spot if these ads if they're fake. Well, this 10 Republican, 10 GOP party was retweeted some of their awful comments by Kellyanne Conway, by Donald Trump Jr., by senior officials in the Trump campaign. I don't believe they knew that this was Russian sponsored. And what is particularly disturbing is it literally took until just a week or so before Twitter took down this obviously fake account, even though the real Tennessee Republican Party had been asking to take it down for months. Just because the process seems to be so cumbersome. Have you seen any evidence of any kind of link between these ads and the Trump campaign? As you mentioned, they did in some cases get retweeted or sent around by members of the campaign. I think that's one of the questions that still part of the investigation. You know, was there an ability for some of the Russians to target into specific states? Again, we need to get more information from these companies. Where we're focusing our efforts, though, is, yes, what happened in 2016, but also, more importantly, they'll be back.